hum viewer and stare into my crystal ball. I see a name. It starts with a J. No? How about an S? A D? Maybe a T. Yes, a T. This person was close to you. I have a message from them. Oh, they're not dead? Well, I wasn't really talking to you. I was talking to the other viewer who has a dead relative whose name starts with a T or a D or an S or a J. Everyone knows psychics are nothing more than very skilled scam artists, masters of the cold read, able to discern a plethora of details about you from the way you behave, dress, and speak. Any details they can't read right away, they simply have you fill in yourself as they lead you on with very purposefully vague questions that allow you to fill in the blanks yourself. Don't get us wrong, it takes real talent to be so cunning and manipulative, but real magic, future seeing powers? Come on, everybody knows that's not for real. Or is it? The US military once thought it was, and rumors persist that faith in psychics lasted well into the 1990s. Some even say that psychics provided the US military with good, actionable intelligence, and may have even saved lives. But we're not here to discuss classified boondoggles. We're here to talk about the times that psychics got it right. So right, in fact, that it makes one second guess their position on psychics. Maybe just maybe some psychics at least are the real deal. Assassination of John F. Kennedy November 22, 1963 is a sunny and pleasant day. The American president, the popular and dashing Democrat John Fitzgerald Kennedy, is traveling through Dallas, Texas in an open-top convertible. Crowds wave to the president from the sidewalks, and Secret Service agents keep nervous eyes on the massive crowds. As Kennedy's vehicle passes by the Texas School Book Depository building right at 12.30 p.m., a CIA operative fires a single magic bullet which kills Kennedy and, through evil witchcraft, frames Lee Harvey Oswald for the crime. Or if you believe the government, then Oswald fired three non-magic bullets, still killing Kennedy. The nation is shocked and in deep mourning. Assassinations aren't the type of thing that happen here in America, especially not the president. That's something left to the communist bloc where political rivals are dealt with through courteous public debates and bullets to the head. Mostly bullets to the head though. But wait, could this be a communist attack? Is the Soviet Union behind the assassination? Was this a preemptive strike to sever the head from the body and Soviet bombers are even now on their way to deliver nuclear Armageddon? For people living in 1963, they got to search for the answer to these and other equally pants-shittingly terrifying questions over the next few days. But if the entire nation had just listened to one woman, perhaps this horrible event could have been avoided altogether. Psychic Jeannie Dixon was a famous psychic from her day, though her popularity exploded after she successfully predicted that the American president would die in office seven years before it happened. In a 1956 interview highlighting her psychic powers, Dixon stated that the 1960 election would be won by a Democrat, and that the president would then die in office or be assassinated, though not necessarily on the first term. Others would embellish the account, with Dixon doing a fair bit of embellishing herself after the fact. She did accurately predict the assassination, but after it happened, tried to add details that made it seem as if she specifically seen it happen to JFK. Either way, the original death still occurred, and to a Democrat president while in office, exactly as predicted. End of World War II Jeannie Dixon didn't just predict the assassination of an American president, though. In fact, on at least two occasions, she apparently consulted with presidents directly, claiming that her visions were given to her by God, made her very popular amongst the religious community. Due to some of her prophecies actually coming true and the help of a whole lot of word of mouth, Dixon got invitations to the White House on at least two occasions. On the first occasion, she consulted with President Roosevelt about a year and a half before the war ended, who asked her when the war would be over. With pressure mounting from the Allies for a decisive campaign against the Germans and steep losses in the Pacific, no doubt that the President was eager for any good news about the most destructive war in human history ending. Allegedly, Dixon told the President that the war would end in 1945 which must have picked up his spirits. Sadly, he would die before the war was over. The second time that Dixon was invited to the White House was by the now second most controversial of American presidents, Richard Nixon. In 1971, Nixon invited Dixon, say that three times fast, to the White House, although the details of their conversation remained between the two of them. Perhaps Dixon warned Nixon of his impending impeachment, and ultimately led to his decision to resign in disgrace instead. Mark Twain predicts his death. Samuel Clemens, better known by his pen name of Mark Twain, is one of America's greatest authors. He held rather dim views on his treatment of blacks by white Southern society and made many of his feelings known through his books. Perhaps the most famous of his books, though, is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, featuring one black character whose name has, with time, become incredibly uncomfortable to say in the midst of a mixed-race classroom. 
Yet, Twain was apparently more than just a literary visionary. He may have in fact been a psychic visionary as well. He had been born in 1835 just after Halley's Comet had become visible again to observers on Earth. The comet named after Edmund Halley, who calculated the gravitational effects of Jupiter and Saturn on cometary orbits, had been observed since at least 240 BC and follows an extremely elliptical orbit path that sees it dip closer to the Sun than Mercury before flying out to the reaches of Neptune's orbit, taking about 75 years, the comet can be regularly predicted and will next appear in our skies in 2061. As he neared the end of his life, Twain commented that he had come into this world with Halley's Comet in 1835 and that he expected to go out with it when it arrived the following year. With his trademark self-deprecating humor, Twain said, The Almighty has said, no doubt, now here are these two unaccountable freaks, they came in together, they must go out together. Sure enough, the very next year Twain died of a heart attack just as the comet became visible to the Earth. Nostradamus Come on, you didn't think we were going to discuss psychics and not talk about the granddaddy of all psychics, did you? Nostradamus was a French astrologer and physician, though we use that term very loosely, who lived through a major plague outbreak in the 1500s. As a child, he hoped to attend university but was thrown out when the school closed its doors due to an outbreak of plague. Years later, he would meet and marry his wife who would give him two kids, and the plague killed all three as well. You could say that Nostradamus' life was tainted by tragedy, which might have affected the many prophecies that he made later in life about future events. One of his most famous predictions was that London would burn in a great fire in the year 66. Unfortunately, he didn't give the first two digits to that date, but a hundred years after his death, London did in fact burn. On September 5, 1666, the Great Fire of London burned through the city and displaced 70,000 out of 80,000 residents. The fire laid waste to the city exactly as Nostradamus had predicted a century before, which makes us suspicious that he didn't simply return as a ghost and set the fire himself. Another prediction by Nostradamus was that the oppressed people in his native France would one day rise up and demand justice. The elite would fall in a bloody revolution, which would shake the nation to its core. This would seemingly point to the French Revolution in 1789, which did in fact end up with a lot of nobles dead as the poor and downtrodden rose up against the wealthy elite who exploited and ruled over them. Of course, this prediction should be taken with a grain of salt, as this kind of thing is sort of inevitable when you live for centuries in a political and economic system that favors the rich and disenfranchises everyone else. America, here's looking at you. Apparently Nostradamus also saw past the French Revolution though and gave a name of a figure who would rise to power and lead Europe to disastrous war. He referred to this figure as Pau, Ney, and Lorem. And apparently if you do a bit of linguistic gymnastics, you get the name Napoleon out of that. However, what did come to pass was that this figure would, as he put it, deny the pious's entry and imprison them. Napoleon did indeed lock up Popes Pius VI and Pisu VII, and that's close enough to count in our book. Perhaps the most famous of Nostradamus's prediction was that of a child born in the West Europe who would seduce a great troop with his tongue and his fame will spread as far as the East. Another quatrain says, beasts ferocious with hunger will cross the rivers. The greater part of the battlefield will be against Hister. If this one isn't obvious by now, then simply replace the S in Hister with an L. That's right, many people claim that Nostradamus accurately predicted Hitler's birth and rise to power, and even the earth-shaking clash of armies, which would be World War II, when he said, the two greatest ones will be at war with one another. In this case, the two greatest ones are the Axis and Allied powers. Nostradamus also predicted the death of President Kennedy along with his brother, at least according to his followers. In another quatrain, Nostradamus stated that two great men would die, one during the day and the other at night. Incredibly, John F. Kennedy did die in the afternoon, and five years later, just past midnight, his brother Robert F. Kennedy was also killed. Edgar Casey. Nostradamus is all good and fine, but we'd like our psychic prophets to be just a little bit more accurate. American psychic Edgar Cayce, also known as the Sleeping Prophet, gave several predictions, many of which came true. In 1925, he gave a psychic reading to a young doctor. He warned that though the doctor would come into a great deal of money, he should guard it carefully as adverse forces would come in 1929. Then, six months before the stock market crash, in March 1929, Casey warned a stockbroker that a great disturbance in financial circles was about to take place. Perhaps more terrifyingly, at least for the recipient, were Casey's warnings of World War II. In 1935, Casey gave a reading to a 29-year-old freight agent that catastrophic events were building within the international community. He accurately predicted that the Austrians, Germans, and then later the Japanese would band together, and that militaristic groups within those nations would set the world on fire. Fire. Sure enough, just a few years later, German expansionism forced France and Britain to declare war, and two years later, the Japanese would drag America.
America into the war with their attack on Pearl Harbor. The Bible Many have claimed that secret codes run the length of the Bible and that it accurately predicts events throughout history. Today, there's little evidence that any of this is anything more than a lot of wishful thinking. But one thing that the Bible did eerily predict was the Earth's position in space. While other religions and myths spoke of the Earth being flat or on the back of a large animal or something similar, the Bible said in the book of Job chapter 26 verse 7, he hangs the Earth upon nothing. What about modern radios though? Well, once more in the book of Job, God says to Job way back in 1500 BC, Can you send lightnings that they may go and say to you, here we are? Here God is asking Job if light can manifest into speech, and yet we now know that light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum as our radio waves. God must have apparently been filling Job's head with mind-blowing knowledge, which probably blew his BC brain away, because once more in the book of Job, God says to Job, when the morning stars sang together, today we know that stars emit radio waves which you can actually tune into and listen to as audio. What do you think about psychics? Are they the real deal or phony baloney? Ever had a psychic prediction come true? Let us know in the comments. And since we've already predicted you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.